Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do One Piece 724 review. Once again, that is 724 of One Piece. Whoa, dude. Like, this chapter, who would have thought that things would have panned out the way they did? Not me. I was expecting like, I was expecting a full-on sky battle between Sanji and Flamingo. And we didn't get that. We didn't get that. And that to me was unfortunate because I was like, fuck, I want to see like the sky battle. Like like the last time we had a sky battle that I remember was like Shura versus Don Fall in Sky P and shit. But like the last full-on sky battle. But even though we got a short one, where it was basically like Sanji getting a few hits here and there. And just Flamingo pretty much after that, like, one-siding. I wasn't that disappointed at all. In fact, I was like, whoa. Because in the greater scheme of things, even though the fight itself was not that long, this is monumental when it comes to the overall progression of the story. Because this, I think, is the way the New World should be on almost a regular basis. And granted... The Straw Hats have had a hard time getting in the New World at first because they got thrown off course after Fishman Island. They got thrown to Punk Hazard. That of course led to them have that of course led to them having issues with, with Flamingo. So not, I can't say that the other Supernova when they entered the New World had had the same level of uh, danger on them. But Flamingo is Flamingo, okay, and. His sense of danger is quite odd because his connections, his charisma, his pace is monumentous. And his powers, which we actually see, first of all, we learn about his devil fruit, the Italy Tonomi. And we learn about a few things that he can do. And knowing that all the while this guy is still horrified of Kaido, it just, it's in my mind because this is like, this guy is fucking powerful as shit. I mean, we already saw him broke out of Aokiji's ice. We seen him use uh, Haosuka Hockey. He was the same guy that could cut that could cut off Crocodile's head with a freaking finger twitch, who cut off Orange Junior's leg with a simple hand motion. The same guy who could stop Diamond Joe's mid motion. The, the guy who could throw icebergs easy. And then in this chapter. We see him do even more shit. One thing just had my fucking jaw dropped. I'm like, no, what the hell? And even still, this guy is horrified of facing Kaido. Kaido, man. Yo. Mmm. Good lord, Kaido. I can't, please. I, oh, man. But, um, because I'll get to that later. Because I want to say some, I want to say something. And I'll probably make a discussion video on that later. Uh, because this weekend, of course, is Comic-Con, and I'll be more into that. But maybe next week, we'll see. But let me say this, all right? Law is impressive. You know, let me let me go to the actual chapter, right? Let me go on by a system basis here, right? The first system, the first part of the chapter, the fight. Sanji does his thing, all right? He, he gets a kick here. Flamingo dodges the kick. He's like, yeah, foo, foo, foo. He's laughing, foo, foo, foo. And then he does a five-color something swipe. And what I'm assuming that means is that his strings, at this point in time, have different color schemes. And normally, they're invisible. So that could probably mean that his, string, that his strings could be transparent because he can alter the color of the strings. And so, of course, having no color would make them transparent or white, whatever. Where you, where you can't see them. But maybe that also means that each color scheme of a string has a different power of some kind. A different ability. Now, I don't know because, again, we're not too sure. We just learned about his Ito Ito no Mi. About like, what's called. And we've seen a few things that he can do here and there. But that's it. So, but that keep, keep an eye on that whole five color thing. Now, aside from that, Sanji, he gets hit. F Flamingo turns attention to the Sunny Go. Sanji from the backside. Pull out Free Spectrum. Okay? And Flamingo's like, you know what? It's not bad. It's not bad, not bad. And then he just Sanji stops midair. Right? He stops moving. And 
right then and there, I was sweat. I was like, fuck no. 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 No, not yet. No, Sanji. No, 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 no. Run. Save him. Someone get in there. And I was thinking that he was going to break out the uh, Hell's Memory State, but he actually didn't even use that in this fight at all. Not the Hell's Memory State. What happens is that Flamingo, he, so he's pausing the air, all right? Sanji. Flamingo just cocks back. And like, all of a sudden, a rope just comes out of nowhere, out of his hand. And then, or like right here in the pond area. In comes Law. This was mad impressive. He throws a piece of wood into the actual, like, sky. He does a room where, because it's in his range. And remember, because his range is actually, like, massive at, at, like, an instant point in time. Because remember Punk Hazard, the fucking mountains? Yeah. Law. And, but my thing here is that, I guess because he's fighting against Fujitora and Flamingo all the while, that he, his, his stamina has been, like, depleted significantly. But still, we see him, and he does his room to the wood. He warps with the wood, then does an even bigger room. And this is the first time, the first time, we actually see a full-blown spherical room. Not a semi-sphere, but an actual pure spherical room from Law. Huge! I mean, it's just like, whoa, room. Like, Law could be deadly. The bigger his room is, the more powerful he is, because the scale of his room, he can literally control all objects at will. It's just like attacked. And then he just does things. He just he's nasty. Law room teleports with Flamingo. And this is what had my jaw drop. The the attack that he had, the rope, oh he he calls it overheat. And then he goes like this. But the trajectory was uh off target, obviously, because he switched places with law. Because he warped. The attack range is so great where the rope goes all the way to dress Rosa. And I'm sitting here like, what the f And then it cuts through a freaking building in dress Rosa. So I'm sitting here and I'm contemplating multiple things. First of all, this is obvious some kind of like rope burn because he called it overheat. And then the rope has some kind of heat ability to it that's number one the second thing is that the distance was huge we're, we're talking about at least at least a few thousand kilometers given that we know about um what's her name uh violet's ability and how she can see all the country and her range via the eagles is like five thousand and no and it is the eagles because she said that in the last chapter but either way um but yeah like she can like see that and that's number two. So we don't know how long it is exactly, but it has to be a significant distance. Number three, how fast is this thing? Because Law and Sanji were still in the air while this robe was blitzing towards Dressrosia and cutting buildings in half. So this overheat attack is ridiculous. Oh my like, dude, what the fuck? is that it's it, it's the range is immense the heat attribute of like the rope burn has is, is so great where it could cut through buildings easily like clean cuts and it's fast as shit so sanji i love you bro but had not law come in there you probably would have died you probably would have died because that is one hell of an ability that's one hell of an attack Ooh, and what he's probably doing actually is he's probably taking the strings and he's like compressing the strings to such a degree where you can, where they, they, they where they become visible without him actually changing the colors, and then he condenses them and then he makes them twist around at a very uh, rapid rate to where they actually produce the friction that creates the rope burn. I mean that's my automatic that's my initial assumption that could change later on. I have no idea. N no zero. But that attack was beastly, and then Law warps over to the Sunny Gun. So that to me was actually beastly. Right? So, so that whole combat stick was beastly as fuck. All right, I, I just can't deny that. Um, the way it panned out. I mean, again, granted, I really want to see a full-on sky battle. We didn't get to see that, but still, I'm not gonna complain that much because Law was just impressive. Sanji was just impressive. Flamingo was horrifyingly impressive, and the dude's still afraid of Kai. And so that's the whole combat part right there. 
After that, they're on the boat, okay? And actually, I'll give Oda a lot of credit here. Well, I can't give him... I want to say that Oda did a good job in the sense that he didn't jump over to the shit. He actually focused on this part of the story. He focused on this and what's happening with these people. Because these people, let's be honest here, are more important than what's going on in Block D. Block D, the only person that we care about there are Cavendish and Rebecca. We can assume that Block D will probably pan out to be a one-on-one -on -one against those two. But what's going on here is far more important. Because Flamingo. And then after that is basically the law. He actually tells them, okay, so we need to leave, alright? Because after I think he either get either he does something with the with the heart of Caesar Clown. And I believe that he actually returns Caesar Clown heart to him. Which I find kind of strange because I'm thinking, why don't you keep it or why don't you give it to Nami? So they have so in case his sea cuffs come undone, they have a countermeasure, which is Caesar Clown's heart. But he gives the heart back to Caesar Clown. And that's what it appeared to be. I'm not too sure exactly. Maybe you guys can clarify on that. Because, again, I myself, I'm not, I'm not too sure. But even then, if he did give Caesar Khan his, his own heart back, my personal opinion, a bad move. Re real bad move. Real bad move. But either way, what happens is that Law says, okay, so now we need to go. You guys have to go to Zhou. All right? Because he is very adamant about making sure that Caesar Clown is not given back to Flamingo. All right? Very adamant. And then Nami's like, no, 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 we're called the Straw Hat Pirates for a fucking reason. We can't leave without Luffy. And then, no, in comes Fujitora, ship levitating, like, yeah, what now? And, 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 <sighs> listen then. He's levitating an entire battleship, which by themselves are massive. And at the same time, he's, he, he, he pulled down three meteorites. He pulled down three meteors while levitating an entire battleship while eating ramen. He is not even trying. This is all casual for the guy. Right now, it's like a walk in the park, whatever, I don't care. Alright? Like, seriously, like, just eating ramen... And then we have this buddy, he's like, after all this thing with the whole tack thing, and he moves the meteorite to the base of the battleship, they're all like, Isho-san, 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 and he's like, mm, miscalculation, let's go back to Dressrosa. I was like, what the, really? So, but he's going back to where the 3,000 Marines are in Dressrosa. So, Zoro, Kima, the rest of them are, are going to have a very hard time. Very hard time. But before then, Sanji, he gives Law words of wisdom. He gives Law words where he's like, yeah, listen to that. I'll leave. All right, I'll leave. I'll go to Zoe. Because we all know that Law's buddies, you know, Beppo and the others, they're at Zoe. He's a crewmate. It's just that he reminds Law, but wasn't the goal for us to take the head of one of the young called Kaido. Wasn't that our goal? You seem a little bit too focused on Flamingo. And this I'm going to touch upon later on, because this actually ties to something that may or may not be the case at the end of the chapter. But basically, after that, Law does his uh, thing. He does the tact, and he moves the media. And, and by the way, if you're wondering, I already said last week's chapter, review, that Sanji was going to probably lose to Flamingo. If you're thinking that I thought that Sanji was going to beat Flamingo, no, never said that. I said, because I got PM. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't say that. I said that Sanji is probably going to lose to Flamingo. I just want to see a full-on battle. I did say that. So people need to listen and retain shit. But either way, we move on. The thing about that was that, again, very cool. He moves the meteor. He could have done that from the get-go. And then Flamingo does the over he does the overheat roll once again. Law blocks that. And then basically they bail. Kuda burst, they're out. Chop is like, fuck this shit. Yeah. Bam, boom. And then at the end of the chapter... We literally have Law talking to Flamingo. And then Flamingo's like, you know that the other strats are back in, dress in Dressrosa. I'll just get them, and then I'll uh, have them as hostages, so I can persuade the other strats to, to return to Caesar Clown. And then Law's like, you you will be burned. Just like all those others who have underestimated the strats. Especially Monkey D, Luffy. And then he says this, and I quote verbatim, I have it right here saved. He says, unfortunately, 
my alliance with the Straw Hats ends here. Okay? And then he says, from the moment I joined forces, I only wanted to use them to stop the production of Smile. That was my singular focus. And then he says, because you do not have access to Smile, you will face the wrath of Kaido. Then after he says this, at the end, putting an end to what happened 13 years ago comes first. So, what's very intriguing about this is that now it appears that Law lied to Luffy and the others. At least, well, th there's two things that you, you could take from that. Either one, he's lying to Flamingo, and his goal is still Kaido. Or number two, this is all a ploy just to persuade Luffy to fight against Flamingo because the greater goal was Kaido. So, and again, we, we don't know exactly. And instead of having like a grand overall scheme to fuck with the entire new world, it appears like it was just a revenge ploy to fuck with Flamingo. Because of the, because of the 13 years that he's, he's had to deal with, with Flamingo, so I don't know. Like I'm, I'm see now I'm not too sure about Law, because it's either or. I mean Law could really be like you know fuck it. Like I'm, like my main mission wasn't actually to beat Kaido, more so just to you know stop, just to put Flamingo in this position where Flamingo is gonna have a yon call, one of the most powerful dudes on his ass. Which Flamingo does not want whatsoever. And the thing about that is that, again, it seems like it's all revenge for the, for the past 13 years that he's been underneath Flamingo's wing. So, again, I'm not too sure. But if that's the case, then, I mean, I don't know how to take it exactly because it's, it's that'd be very surprising. At, at the same time, that would kind of well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I'll be honest. Because it's not explained in full detail yet. And furthermore, we haven't gotten a really good grasp on the situation about what Law is thinking exactly. I mean, again, this could all just be a lie to try and fool Flamingo. All right, he's trying to outpace Flamingo here. And, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not too sure exactly. But if you, if you take it at face value, that means that he lied to Luffy. And his only goal was just to beat Flamingo. And he probably would end his alliance after Flamingo either died or Kaido was on his way to kill him. So, but again, we're not too sure about that. And when you think about what Sanji said, Sanji said, you're too focused on Flamingo. This was supposed to be a fucking checkpoint, not a full-on war. So, when you think of what Sanji says, there actually is a lot of weight to what I'm saying at face value. About how law may have lied. I'm just saying, I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. And the last part I want to touch upon, which I'll do a discussion video about either next week, because again, this weekend, it's Comic Con. It's Comic Con, bro. I mean, actually, I may do it Friday if I have time, but we'll see. Either way. It's going to be about what? Well, after taking notice of uh, F F uh, F Flamingo's powers with that whole rope thing, with overheat. And this guy being ridiculously powerful and still bringing favor to Kaido. And knowing that Kaido had a thing with Shanks. And Shanks went on his merry way. I'm, I'm starting to think, yeah, Shanks is probably the most powerful dude in One Piece. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, Dragon is somewhere back in the mind, too. It's just that I don't believe that Dragon could walk into Marine Ford in the midst of all this chaos with, with a power high Blackbeard. On two devil fruits, Akainu on a mission, on a mission, Kizaru Garp. I don't think that he could actually walk in there and with, and with his presence alone stop the war. I don't think Monkey D. Dragon could have done that. Shanks, well, he fucking did it. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, I'll do. A, I'll talk about it in a, in a discussion video later on. But all the other decks, okay, Be sure, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. You know, fuck it, I'll do it tonight. Ah, uh, yeah, no, tomorrow morning. Uh, you know, well, peace. Have a nice day. The rating, chapter, amazing. It was an amazing chapter on peace. Okay, now I'm done. Oh, shit, one last thing. 
Can you guys please check out this guy on YouTube? His name is uh, Jim's Nerd Nation. He does One Piece chapter reviews, and he's doing it from the first chapter, and he's doing so as until he, until he actually catches up with the actual One Piece manga. And he also has some pretty good artwork on his channel. He's made me a few Sanji stuff, and I'm like, oh boy, oh boy. So, just check him out. The dude's real cool. If you're intrigued about that, about actually viewing, going, re revisiting past chapters of One Piece, and actually getting reviews for those past chapters of One Piece, check out Jim's Nerd Nation. That link is going to be in the description box down below. Now I'm signing out. Peace. Have a nice day. Yo, I'm not done yet, man. One last thing. I, I completely forgot about this. Flamingo can apparently string himself to the clouds. That's how he actually flies across the skies. He actually string like, like he's freaking spidey. He just yeah. mm, 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 string. He actually swings across the clouds, and he's telling Sanji and others go to an area where there's no clouds because he can't follow you there because he can't because there is nothing to attach with with his strings. So his strings have a large range of dexterity. If they can destroy through buildings, cut through buildings, and so on and so forth, but the same and flesh like Ors Jr. and hold Diamond Joes at the same time be so delicate where they can actually grab onto clouds, not break up not break apart the clouds. And fl and fl uh, fl Flamingo can actually string across those strings. So kind of and in fact you kind of question well wouldn't his own weight disperse the clouds and apparently not maybe the strings have some kind of like weird altering gravity effect i don't know but still okay now we're done now we're actually done we're done peace rate comment subscribe have a nice day